Okay, we're going to identify if polygons, um, or what type of polygons we have, but this time they're going to be in a coordinate plane. So in this particular instance, they've given us a shape and they're asking us, asking us if this polygon is a rectangle. And then why? Well, I can look at it and I can say, yeah, that really looks like a rectangle. But let's look at the answer choices that they are giving us. They're saying that yes or no, this is a parallelogram. And yes or no, the diagonals of this parallelogram are congruent or not congruent. So what they're asking us to do is first prove, of it, prove that this is a parallelogram or not. And then secondly, identify this shape as a rectangle by its diagonals. And remember that diagonals of a rectangle are congruent. So let's do the first thing. Let's prove that this is or is not a parallelogram. And remember that parallelograms have the same slope. So let's find the slope of line segment AB. Let's use these two points. It is a negative slope because it's going down and it's negative 1 over 1 which is the same as negative 1. Now let's look at the slope of the side opposite that which is DC and it also is a negative slope. Let's use these two points and it's negative 1 over 1 so it's negative 1. So line A or line segment AB is parallel to line segment DC. So we've got those two parallel sides. Let's check the other two. The slope of AD is going up. Let's use these two points. And that's a slope of 1 over 1. Let's check the slope of side BC. Let's use these two points. It's 1 over 1, which is 1. Since those two lines, AD and BC, have the same and I should have a line segment over those, sorry, um, have the same slope. They are parallel. Now, pause your video, write this information down because you're going to need it because then I'm going to erase it and we're going to look at the diagonals of the rectangle. Okay, now that you have that written down, since we know that both sides are parallel, we can rule out answer number E, which says no, it's A, B, C, D is not a parallelogram. All right, now let's erase everything and look at the diagonal of this shape. Let's look at diagonal A, C, and we need the length of that because we're going to find out if it's congruent to diagonal D, B. So we're going to need the distance formula, so I wrote it up there. So the the length of line segment AC, that diagonal, is the difference of the x value squared plus the difference of the y value squared and the square root of that whole thing, and that gives me the square root of 40. I'm going to use the distance formula for diagonal DB. Using the same thing, I find that that diagonal has a length of the square root of 40. Well, since those are both the exact same length, then I can say that this is indeed a rectangle because they have congruent triangles, or sorry, congruent <laughs> diagonals. So that would be an answer of B. All right. The second thing I'd like you to do is determine whether this triangle with the given vertices is scalene, isosceles, or equilateral. Equilateral. Well, let's review. Scalene means all the sides are different lengths. Isosceles means two sides are the same length on a triangle. And equilateral means all sides are the same length on an equilateral. So since we're talking about length of sides, we're going to need our distance formula again. So let's write it down. And then they're asking us to state whether this is a right triangle. Now, in your homework, sometimes I'm going to give you uh, a shape on a coordinate plane, and sometimes I'm just going to give you the vertices. So I've included both here. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is find the length of these sides. So let's find the length of BA using the distance formula. And when I do, it's the square root of 169, which is a perfect square, which is 13. All right, then I'm going to find the length of AC using, again, the distance formula. I'm just plugging those um, 
coordinates into the distance formula, and I get that the length of AC is the square root of 52. Well, I can right now say, oop, this is not an equilateral triangle, because equilateral means all the sides have to be the same length, and I have two that are different right now. Okay, so let's find the length of that third side, BC, using the distance formula, and I find that it is a square root of 117. Well, since all three sides are different, I know that this is not an isosceles triangle. This is a scalene triangle. All right, now I need you again, because I went through this pretty fast, to stop the video, write this information down, jot down questions if you have them, because I'm probably going to have to erase some stuff here. Okay. Now, it asks us to state whether the triangle is a right triangle. Remember that a right triangle is formed by two perpendicular lines. So two of those sides of the triangle have to be perpendicular. And just looking at it, let's start with angle C, because that looks like the most likely candidate if there is one. And remember that perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. Opposite means different sign. Reciprocal means fraction flipped. So first, let's find the slope of side BC. And we're going to use those two points. It's going down 3 and over 2, so it has a slope of negative 3 halves. Now let's find the slope of side CA. Let's use these two points. Now this slope is going up, so it is positive, and it's going up 2 and over 3. Now, negative 3 halves and positive 2 thirds are opposite reciprocal slopes. So therefore, this triangle is a right triangle, and C is the right angle. All right, the third thing that we have is the diagonals of a quadrilateral, A, B, C, D, intersect at point F and that point is 3, 5. The vertex A is 2, 1, and vertex B is, I can't read my own writing here, 6, 3. So what must the coordinates of C and D be to ensure that quadrilateral A, B, C, D is a parallelogram? Now I need you to remember that the diagonals of a parallel, parallelogram bisect each other. And bisect means, sorry, there we go, this is better. Bisect means that F is the midpoint of a diagonal. Now, they give us no picture here, so I'm very visual. I'm going to at least kind of just jot down something for myself and uh, it doesn't have to be re real accurate, so I'm going to do an XY grid here, and I'm going to give me a point A at 2, 1, and a point B at 6, 3, and this midpoint at 3, 5. Well, I know the diagonal that goes from A to C has to go through that F. It's a midpoint. And so... I'm going to use the midpoint, I could use the midpoint formula, but I'm going to use our little cheater cheater pumpkin eater way to find the midpoint or an endpoint. I'm going to list endpoint A and my midpoint, and then I'm going to derive what my endpoint C would be by saying that, hey, going on my x values from 2 to 3, I added 1. If 3 is in the middle, well, C would have to be 1 away on the other side. So I'm going to add 1 to 3, and I'm going to get that the endpoint C would have an x value of 4. I'm going to do the same thing with my y values. 1 to 5 is a distance of 4. On the other side of that midpoint, I'd have to have 4 more. So 5 to 4 was going to give me 9. So my endpoint C is going to be 4, 9. So I'm going to draw it on there, just kind of, and that kind of looks about where it would be. 
All right, so now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to draw a, diag or a diagonal from B. I know it has to go through F. So if B is at 6, 3, and the midpoint F is at 3, 5, well, 6 is 3 away from 3. I had to subtract 3 to get from 6 to 3. So I'm going to subtract 3 again on the other side of 3, and I'm going to get that 0 is the x value of d. And I'm going to do the same thing with my y values. This goes way back to uh, unit 1, actually. So if you're struggling with this, make sure that you ask about it in the teacher talk. To get from 3 to 5, well, I, sub or I added 2. So it has to have 2 on the other side of that midpoint. And so my d value, the y value of d is going to be 7. So let's jot that in there. And yeah, that looks like that would make a parallelogram. So the vertices, the coordinates of c would be 4, 9. The coordinates of d would be 0, 7 to make sure that quadrilateral a, b, c, d was a parallelogram. I'm sorry this is such a long video, but this is kind of a, a big concept. Now, the last thing that we're going to do is I'm going to give you some coordinates, and I want you to classify this quadrilateral, quadrilateral as precisely as possible. And notice that um, I've given you some choices here underneath the grid. Okay, well, now when you're looking at these, ordered pairs, you're going, oh my goodness, it's got variables in there. Uh, I've never seen that before. Okay, this is coordinate geometry. Notice that all the x values have an f variable and that all the y values have an s variable. So I don't want you to freak out. What I want you to do is I want you to set f equal to 1 and s equal to 1. If I do that, then when I look at point A, negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. And negative S, which is, would be negative 1. So that point is going to be at negative 4, negative 1. All right, let's do the same thing with B. 4 times 1 is 1. And negative s would be negative 1, so I can plot, plot that. 4 times f is 4, and 7 times 1, 4 times 1 is 4, 7 times 1 is 7, so c is going to be at 4, 7. d is going to be at negative 4 times 1, which is negative 4 and 7 times 1, which is 7. So now, if I connect these vertices, and I didn't draw that very well, but it kind of gives you the picture of it, you can see that we've got a, a quadrilateral here that, and if I count the sides, each side is 8. And if I'm looking at the corners, I can also see, so we all of the sides are congruent, um, the corners are all right angles. Well, this is a four-sided figure, so it is a quadrilateral. It's parallel because all the sides are either vertical or horizontal. It's a rectangle because it has four, con uh, four right angles, and it's a parallelogram. And it's a rhombus because it has for all the angles are congruent, all of the sides are congruent. But the description that fits it absolutely the best, because it is a rhombus and a rectangle, is that it is a square. Now, you're going to be having stuff like that on your test as well, so make sure you know how to do this. All right, I think you're ready for your practice and your teacher talk. Make sure you write down any questions that you have.